Traditionally, the treatment of advanced metastatic sarcoma involves the use of medicines such as doxorubicin, either alone or in combination with other agents, or sometimes medicines such as gemcitabine in combination with docetaxel. Within the last year, we have a new drug that's been approved, a humanized monoclonal antibody to PDGFR alpha known as lertumab. This particular medicine was FDA approved for patients with advanced metastatic sarcoma for which you would consider doxorubicin based therapies. The nice addition to this particular medication is that the side effect profile is favorable compared to many other types of therapies that we often combine with doxorubicin. Prior to the approval of laritumab, we oftentimes either used doxorubicin by itself to treat uh, advanced metastatic disease or we would sometimes pair doxorubicin with other medicines such as ifosfamide uh, or sometimes lesser known medicines such as decarbazine. While these combinations have been used for years, none of these combinations have successfully shown survival advantages. With the approval of laritumab, we now have a second agent that we can use for which there is survival data. This particular medicine was FDA approved for use in patients uh, in whom you would consider doxorubicin. This particular medicine not only was associated with a higher response rate, but it also had a much higher progression-free survival and a much higher overall survival in a phase one slash phase two setting. In interpreting this data, it's important to know that there is a phase three clinical trial that has completed and for which we're awaiting final results. But at this time, we do have the available use of alertumab and it has added to our ability to treat patients because of its side effect profile. Importantly, patients do sometimes experience more nausea, neutropenia with this particular medicine, but the febrile neutropenia rate between the combination of doxorubicin plus alertumab was essentially the same as single agent doxorubicin. And this is important because febrile neutropenia oftentimes can be a scary experience for the patient and a very serious concern for the clinician. The clinical trials that led to the approval of alertumab in combination with doxorubicin uh, featured several different subtypes of sarcomas. Importantly, these trials were weighted as such to provide emphasis on diseases such as leiomyosarcoma, liposarcoma, uh, and other variants uh, such as uh, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. Within the phase one slash phase two trial, evaluating alertumab in combination with doxorubicin compared to doxorubicin alone, Lyomile sarcoma was the most common subtype tested. Based on this, I think it's safe to say that the best available data is in patients with Lyomile sarcoma. Because of this, I do recommend uh, this combination, particularly in patients uh, whom we want to consider doxorubicin-based therapies. Uh, I've had patients that take the combination, complete the six cycles of combination therapy, and are then able to go on to maintenance alertumab with great success in terms of both improvement of symptoms, reduction of tumor size, and overall improvement of quality of life. In one instance, I had a 78-year-old patient um, who was actually in great health, uh, for which I considered doxorubicin in combination with alertumab. The concern that we had was that his age and uh, comorbidities could likely impact his ability to tolerate these medicines, but we found that uh, when treating this patient with the combination, the patient tolerated the therapy very well had a response early on. Uh, his side effects, uh, which were few, such as neutropenia, were managed well. He never had any hospitalizations for febrile neutropenia, which was important. And he was able to complete all six cycles of the combination therapy. He then went on to have the maintenance therapy for essentially seven months more uh, with a very good quality of life uh, in, during that particular time point.